Uh, I want to get to the Cavs because the two of you combined for a story last night about the Cleveland Cavaliers. They, they won a game. So, it, was so a, that it was a really good win, actually. Should be good, really well. right? 136 to 114 in Cleveland. Interim coach, but not actually interim coach, Larry Drew was on the sideline. But man, this is so mm, bizarre, right? right? I, I can't, I mean, first of all, not unusual, by the way, to make a coaching change before a team like the Hawks come to town. Right, guys? To sort of be like, oh, look, our new guy got a win. Except he doesn't think he's the new guy yet <laughs> because. <laughs> well, he was the interim coach last year, won eight of nine games, and he's been a head coach in the league, got the Hawks to the playoffs three times there. His, his <laughs> feeling, play with him. yeah, his, Larry Drew's feeling is this, that he's not dying to take this role on. And he, you know, he, he, he loves Ty Lu. Mm -hmm. He wanted to stay a part of his staff. And so if you're going to get a bump up in pay as interim coach, uh, you're going to get a few hundred thousand dollars more to finish the season out. What he's asking for is this, not a long-term extension. He knows that's not going to come. But some kind of a contractual agreement that if they brought him back next year, and said, so we're going to bring you back as our coach. Here's what the salary will be. And, and some sort of middle of the road, a median uh, salary. But if you don't bring me back as coach, basically some go away money, kind of like a little bit of, sure. of, of a buyout of probably a few hundred thousand dollars. That basically for the trouble of me doing this, that's what I want. And if you don't want to pay that, I am glad to go sit back on the bench. You could bring somebody else in. I'll honor my contract. I'll be the associate head coach. I mean, this is bizarre. He is in the pregame press conference before the game saying, no, no, I'm still not the interim coach. Yes, I'm very disappointed in the way this is working out. This is not, I mean, we don't see Yeah, this. and I think for a lot of younger coaches who've never had, for a young assistant who no one's ever seen as an interim coach walking the sidelines, you're going to just accept it. Larry Drew's at a different point in his coaching career, and I think he feels like I'm probably going to be an assistant somewhere next year anyway, and this, whether I take this now or not, it's not going to impact that. And he doesn't see a team where, hey, I know I can get this team on a run and we can play well and win. He knows what's coming. Especially with a Kevin lot of losses. going to be out for a while. But here's what's strange about this. He said yesterday on the record to the media, I will not quit. Well, if I'm the Cavs and I see that, and he is standing at the end of the bench and running the timeouts and calling the plays and everything like that, he is acting as the coach. Right. And he says he will not quit. What is the Cavs motivation to deliver what Woj is talking about, which is basically some insurance and some more money? They don't have one. Now, if you were a, a, a rationally smart functioning organization and there was a trust, <laughs> there was trust building within your organization. I just slip that but in I mean, there. Honestly, who, who, initiates, honestly. who initiates that him as the interim coach? Who is that? The well, general manager. I, I will say this. Like from the Cavs perspective, he is the he's not even assistant coach. He is the associate head coach and he is being paid as such. He is paid almost a million dollars a year. He is one of the highest paid assistant coaches or associate head coaches in the league and their point is part of your duties as an associate head coach is if something happens to the head coach whether he is fired or he is role. sick you move into that role and you are being compensated accordingly but Tracy you play you were in Atlanta yeah. with him mm -hmm. you know him and he's been around the block he is not interested I mean when he knows he's in a good bargaining position they don't have another experienced person on that staff as Woj said they would have to bring in someone from the outside in November which is not ideally. If you're a player on that team, how do you feel about all this? The guy you trusted who won championships, a championship with you and took you to finals is gone. And now Larry Drew, the other <laughs> experienced voice on that team, is fighting with management publicly. I mean, it's a mess. I'm, I'm a little confused on this whole situation, to be honest, uh, with the firing of Ty Lue. And I, I get it, you know, Kobe Altman, he didn't bring in Ty Lue. He, that wasn't his hire, I'm sure he's probably looking to bring his guy in and as a player I, I'm a little upset how this is all have, have played out I mean it you know we went to some of these guys have went to three uh, finals with Ty Lue being the coach and we off to a bad start and now you fire this guy and then we having you know some friction with who's our coach it, it's just a mess with this organization let me just articulate right. it better if there was capital if there was emotional capital between the coaching staff and the front office I think that this would work out better. But because of the things that have happened in Cleveland, like Larry Drew was uh, David Blatt's assistant, okay? This made it harder for them to have a more working relationship. But here's, and here's, this is well, what I want to get to a little bit is, you know, yes, LeBron left this team on July 1st. 
a team is going to there's going to be a LeBron sized crater mm -hmm. in your roster after that we all expected their production to go down the team a lot of people outside the team said we don't think you're gonna make the playoffs even though the team certainly said that they were but that was July 1st you have had months over the summer to decide do we think let's evaluate the talent that's left do we think we can make a playoff push we do this professionally so we should be close to right right when we make that evaluation are we going to trade Kyle Korver? Are we going to try to trade Kevin Love? Or no, we've decided instead to sign Kevin to a contract, which means he can't get traded for six months. He's available again on January 23rd. And there's a lot of different reporting. Brian, you've reported you don't think he's that movable under that new contract because you've talked to front offices where people have said that salary is too high. Well, I think any player is tradable. Right, right. But the concept that the Cavs had was that he would be much more movable with a long-term deal. And the front off, go ahead. No, I, I've talked to teams already. Kevin Love, there's going to be interest in Kevin Love. Okay. Yeah, I, I think there's going to be interest in him, and um, they're not going to have to attach assets. But they're not there yet. They can't trade him anyway for a while. And once they re-sign Love, then they made a decision, well, we're going to go down the road of bringing back Kyle Korver and J.R. Smith. Now, they had a deal with Houston when Houston did the Phoenix deal um, for Brandon Knight and Marquise Chris. Mm -hmm. One of the old alternate deals of that Ryan Anderson deal was – um, uh, J.R. Smith and, and another piece to uh, Houston. That that didn't happen. They went with the Phoenix deal. So, um, but that would have still brought back Ryan Anderson, who they could have played. Wasn't it, was it three games into the season that they sat down? That that, that it Kobe. It was the third after two games. After two game. games, that Kobe Altman yeah. and and Ty sat down with J.R. Smith, Kyle Korver, Channing Fry, and Channing Fry, and said, "We're not going to play you guys." That's a that's a quick pivot. Two games into the season.